chess. The greatest game? Eh, maybe not the greatest, but one of the greatest. Uh, one of the oldest games in the world. One of the most beautiful games to play. <clears throat> one of the most difficult. But one that I spent entirely too much time on as a young man. As a young man, as a child. Uh, I probably was a chess geek before the term even uh, came around. Now, there seems to be a rise in popularity these days. The uh, last Christmas, we're now April 2021. Last Christmas, there was an explosion of chess popularity. People couldn't find chess boards anymore, anymore on the shelves or anything. And kind of in the last few months, I've been getting calls. I've been getting contact. People saying, hey, my kid's playing chess. What do I do? What do I tell them? And... Uh, Chess is a cool game, a very cool game. Uh, I think a lot of people seem to think it's a very complicated game. It is complicated, but it's not as complicated as people make you, make you believe it is. So today, hopefully in five minutes or less, I'm going to give you some pointers, some basic ideas of how to play chess, some ways to focus your time and energy while you're playing, and hopefully to improve your results a little bit. Again, really basic stuff. I'm assuming you know the basic moves already. And we're going to help you kind of focus. So first thing to understand. Typical game is about 35 moves. 35 to 40 moves. So you don't have all day to go la di da di da So you've got to be efficient and uh, focused with your moves. Second thing I want to show you. All the, all the pieces have a value. When you understand the value, it helps to decide what you're going to trade, what you're going to sacrifice, where you're going to focus your efforts, what the, uh, what the plan might be. So the value of a piece, the value of a chess piece, is based on one pawn. And it's based on a pawn, but it's also based on the amount of territory covered by that piece when it's standing in the center of the board. So one pawn, if I put a pawn in the center of the board, it covers two spots. A pawn is worth one pawn. It's a little bit complicated because a pawn at the beginning of the game is worth one pawn. By the time it gets to the other side, it can be converted to a queen. So at the end of the game, it becomes much more valuable. But a pawn is worth one to pawn. Bishops and knights are worth three pawns. Uh, both of them are called minor pieces. They're... Uh, they're the same value, but they're kind of, they work a little differently. A knight has the ability to jump. When put in the middle of a board, a knight covers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots. Not a lot, but it has that power to jump over things. So at the beginning of a game, when you have pawns and you have all just a jumble of pieces everywhere, the knight is very powerful. At the end of the game, at the end of the game, if I want to get the king, I have to go one, two, three four, five. I have to go five moves to get my opponent's king. That's pretty inefficient. So when the board is empty, the knight is a slow, cumbersome thing. Bishops, on the other hand, at the end of the game, well, let's first do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Bishop, when put in the center of an empty board, covers thirteen spots. Uh, bishops can attack a king from far away. So at the beginning of the game, when the board is closed, the bishop isn't as powerful. It's blocked off. It can't roam free. By the end of the game, the bishop has a lot more power and a lot more ability to attack. A little thing that I always liked, I always liked to either have two knights or two bishops. I felt that the two knights worked, were a little more powerful together. The two bishops together, that's going to give you this kind of wall of coverage that way. So, anyways, pawns worth one pawn. These minor pieces worth three three pawns. Next, now we're on major pieces, castle. Castle in the middle of a board is going to cover 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 spaces, but it creates a wall. The king can't pass. It can't get through that wall, so that's what makes it really powerful. Uh, but here's where things get a little bit interesting. So a castle is worth five five pawns, but a castle could also be worth two pawns and a knight. Two pawns and a bishop. So this trade would be considered an equal trade. One castle for these three pieces, it's both five points. 
uh, next is going to be a queen. When a queen stands in the center of a board, it covers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. The queen covers 27 spots. The queen is the nuclear bomb, the nuclear weapon, but on an empty board. And this is really important to understand early on. The queen is most powerful when the board is empty. When the board's cluttered up, the board, the queen is not reaching her full capacity. So when the board is empty, the queen has all kinds of power. Uh, but it's, it's, it's always, when you start out, it's a very tempting piece to bring out early, but it becomes very problematic. If you're bringing your queen out and try to go for an attack and your other, your opponent's moving little pieces and potentially trading a bishop, or sorry, a knight or a bishop for your queen. Anyways, the queen is worth... A queen is worth nine pawns, or a queen is worth, or the queen is worth three pawns, a bishop, and three more pawns, or three pawns, a bishop, and a knight, or a castle, a castle, a pawn, and a knight. So these are the different variations. Now, on the other hand, two castles are worth more than a queen. So, you know, if you can somehow, you know, sacrifice, if you sacrifice a knight, a bishop, and two pawns for a queen, you come out ahead. Which brings me to another, another little, little tip. The pieces have a value. If you can, victory is won through material advantage, material gain, winning material advantage. If you get one pawn ahead at any point in the game, even trades basically win you the game. So it's just about getting that one point ahead. So if I somehow lose these and my opponent loses this, I've lost two pawns, he's lost three pawns. At this point, even trades are going to win me the game. So again, you, you get into these situations where it's not as complicated as you might think. Now, the game is divided into three sections. Opening, middle game, end game. The opening is where you set up your pieces, where you establish yourself to move into the middle game, which is the battle, which is the trading off, trading off, trading off. The end game, the end game, and it's kind of hazy where these lines are, there's no set definition, but the end game comes at the point where the king and the pawns are going across and the king and the pawns become the major, the major pieces used. So you, at the end game is where you put these across to convert them into queens. Uh, the opening is what we're going to look at super quickly here right now. And we'll try and put a few rules together. I'll give you some rules. I'll tell you how to put them in play. Then I'll let you go and practice on your own. All right. So here's the five basic rules that I learned a long time ago that really helped me out. Rule number one, move towards the center, control the center. If you control the center, your opponent has to go around to get to your king. So rule number one, control the center. Rule number two, never move the same piece more than once. Never move the same piece twice. Be efficient with your moves. Don't go na 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 because your opponent's going to be developing his pieces, her pieces, while you're moving the same piece over and over. Third, castle early, develop your minor pieces. Sorry, third rule, develop your minor pieces. Bishops, knights, get them into play. Uh, fourth rule, castle early. Fifth rule, as we talked about earlier, keep your queen back. Keep your queen back. So, I'm gonna show you the opening that you have to memorize right now. Memorize this opening. Use only this opening for years. It will put you in a really good position whether you're playing beginners or experts. Memorize this opening. Never deviate from it and you will be far ahead of your uh, contemporaries. So move number one. So that's one, two, bishop, three, horse. You're at your third move third move, your fourth move, you've moved three times, but at this point you can castle. This is castling. So that's move four, five, six, seven. By your seventh move, your minor pieces are in play. 
Your queen is back. Your castle's back. Keep these guys back. Their value lies later on in the game. When the board is empty, they are super powerful. It's tempting to bring them out. But what happens if you bring the queen out too early? It's chopped up here and it doesn't have those, the big range. It, it doesn't have the full power that it possesses at the end of the game when the board is empty. Use these guys to thin out the board. These guys, that's their job, to thin out the board. Uh, and what else you have, what else you have in this situation is all your pieces are in play. If I try and attack the king, I have to come at this side, but all the other pieces are in play. There's nothing worse than losing a game like this. You know, this, maybe you've moved this out. And your two castles are stuck back here. Your horse is over here. Get your pieces into play. Move them to the center so you can get them other spots on the board as quickly as possible. Uh, let's look at that again. First move. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is set up wrong. Again. Move one. Move two. Move three. Move four. Move five. Move six. Castle. Move seven. Now, your opponent's going to be doing things to screw you up a little bit. But for the most part, within about the first six or eight moves, you should be in a position like this. Never move towards the edge of the board. Uh, don't move your pieces towards the edge of the board. For instance, if you move your horse here, your horse is covering one, two, three, four spots. If you move your horse here, your horse is covering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots. So not to the edge, unless you have to, but you don't want to move your pieces to the edge. You don't want to do stuff like this. A bad opening is uh, there. There, oh, now I have to move it back, and there, and there, and maybe there, 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 there. The, very inefficient. Uh, as far as the rest of the game, I'm going to leave it at that for today. There's lots to work on, lots to chew on. It's a short video, you can watch it over. Uh, as far as attacking, if you don't know what to do, just gently move your pieces towards your opponent's king, uh, and don't, don't do attacks with one piece. You rarely win the king with one piece. So get multiple pieces on your opponent's king. Move in with multiple pieces. Uh, and again, make even trades if you can. Get a, get a pawn ahead, get a single piece ahead, then keep making even trades. And there you go. You have your basic chess right there. That's about five years of my chess life, so... Enjoy. Good luck. Checkmate, baby.